Ahead warp factor five, Mr. Sulu. Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I'm gonna talk about my Star Trek captain's chair. Now, any Star Trek fan has probably envisioned themselves sitting in this iconic chair as Captain Kirk, giving our orders and commanding the crew. Um, the, the captain's chair is sort of iconic. Sorry, Kirk. But it is definitely one of those things that like Everybody has ever, who's ever watched the show has always thought to themselves, man, that's sort of the seat of power. That's really where it's all at, isn't it? And love the chair. And uh, I actually, I have one. And it's been, it's been sort of a great um, addition to my Star Trek collect collection. Um, now you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute, this isn't exactly what I saw in the thumbnail. And in fact, you're right. And uh, the reason for that is you might notice the background that I've used in my videos all this time for Game Boy games and all that other kind of stuff. It looks suspiciously black and leathery. And that's because it is, in fact, my real Star Trek captain's chair. All this time, I've been doing any videos uh, where I'm showing things off and I need a background. A chair does really make a great backdrop because it's kind of a little sort of a half a box and my captain's chair has been perfect for that purpose. But it is in fact a Star Trek captain's chair. Um, there's a story to this thing and I'm going to detail it for you for my Star Trek content on my channel. I've had this thing for years, I mean pretty much since the 90s. It's not film accurate. I apologize to anybody who's coming to this thinking, yeah man, you're your Star Trek captain's chair is pretty uh, hokey and uh, amateurish, but you know what? I love it, and I've had it for so long that um, I just wanted to show it off. Um, so how did this thing come about? Well, first of all, there are the, um, the Star Trek technical manual, I believe it is, that was made way back, I think in the 70s. It goes into a lot of detail, and it shows off how you can... Uh, well, maybe not so much how you can build these things yourself, but what were their dimensions? Now, I have a little uncertainty about the accuracy of some of those numbers because th some of the things that they've shown, like the uh, pattern for sewing together your uniform, I followed that pattern and it was not screen accurate, but whatever, whatever. This captain's chair is in there, along with sort of the, um, the, the Mr. Sulu, Mr. Chekhov positions, and... Um, we bought that uh, technical manual book, a friend of mine and I who are big into Star Trek, and we thought, you know, we could make this. Why don't we get ourselves a bunch of lumber and throw together the captain's chair to these specifications? So, uh, well, the problem is, how do you start off? I mean, you need the chair to begin with. Uh, without that, you're really not going to have anything. And of course, the big problem with trying to make a captain's chair is the armrests. Most office chairs or any kind of chair that you see around, they've always got just a little extending armrests or, you know, little thin walls, nothing like this. This chair had caught my eye and I thought, right, this is actually something we could work with. Now, where did the actual office chair part of it come from? It was actually a summer job I had. Uh, there was uh, a whole bunch of just old funky chairs kicking around and there was one that I saw, this one, and I remember asking the people at the um, at the at the office. I was like, "Hey, um, I'll give you some. I'll give you fifty bucks for that chair if you like." And they're like, "Are you sure?" Because as you can see here in the pictures, uh, it was in pretty bad condition. That those are the original photos from the '90s when I got this chair, and it was worn out. And I think it was slightly green. It's probably not coming through in the camera, but. Uh, it needed a lot of TLC, and they're like, oh, you can just have the chair, man. I don't know what the heck you want it for. I'm like, well, it's hard to explain, so yeah, I'll take the chair. So that was the office chair element taken care of, and we thought, right, now we just got to make the box. We've got the uh, dimensions, we know, or, you know, these sort of side panels. I'll uh, rotate the chair in a sec, but basically we thought, okay, we've, we've got the side panel details all figured out with that technical manual. Let's make the chair. So my buddy and I, uh, his dad was a retired carpenter, so his garage was full of band saws and drills and all the equipment we could possibly need to cut these pieces of wood to the right specification to make it all work. 
Uh, it's a little worse for wear. You can see there's like chips and stuff on the uh, edges here, and I'll go over the buttons later, but uh, you can see it's it's had its day. Um, but when it was new, we were just like, hey, hey, this might actually work. Um, so we got things together, and I think on a Friday we were like, right, this weekend we're going to build a captain's chair. Uh, before I uh, reveal that part of the story, one final note about the office chair that I forgot to mention. The upholstery. Now, uh, I did say it was a sort of a greenish color before, and it had that, that big rip along here. Uh, what I did was I went to a um, um, an upholstery store and I said, hey, can I get this refitted with black? Whatever this kind of stuff is, pleather, whatever it is. So they gave me a book with a whole bunch of different patterns. I tried to find one that had the right texture to it. I'll try zooming in here. Um, yeah, can you, I don't know if you can make out, it's sort of got that sort of skin-like quality to it. I said, yeah, okay, that's the one. I'll take that, please. And they're like, right. Oh, you know what? We don't have a name for this particular skin. So what's your last name? And I gave it to them, Armstrong. And they're like, right, from now on, that's going to call. That's gonna be called the Armstrong. <laughs> okay. So uh, I could give you the address of the store if you want. You could go and order yourself some Armstrong uh, upholstery. But back to the boxes. So we, uh, we decided on a Friday, we're going to make this thing. We're going to... Now that we've got all the specifications, we're going to... Ooh, look at that. Bad marking there. Uh, we're going to just cut ourselves these shapes and get this thing to look kind of like it did in the show. And I believe it was a busy weekend, I think. So we ended up not really getting the opportunity. Let's see if I can turn it around by holding the camera. We didn't really get the opportunity till much later on to make it. It is from the rear. Um, I guess in comparison, what I'll do, there you go, there's uh, what that should look like from behind, so pretty good. Um, so, uh, my friend called me, he said, uh, so about that chair, I said, yeah, okay, now we could probably do it, it seems like we've got some free time. He's like, yeah, why don't you just come over? So I did, and lo and behold, his father actually built it for us. He, I think, just had a free weekend, and he just thought, you know, there's all that wood sitting there. There's the plans. Yeah, I'll just make this for you, you guys. So <laughs> this has been actually made by a professional carpenter. Retired, but still, it's got really good work done. Um, you can see, like, even where the office chair lip meets the wood down there. I don't know if I can get the camera much lower. It, it fits. Like, this has been really... Well made, so big thanks to Scott's dad for manufacturing this thing for us. Uh, it's a thing of beauty, and it's from the 90s. I love it. Scuffs and all, and film inaccuracies and all, which I guess actually we should go into. Now, let's, um, let me just reposition the camera here. One big point of contention a lot of Star Trek fans are going to say is, hey, you don't have the wood grain on the armrests. There is actually very small bits of wood that actually sit up here. Um, that was just not going to happen. I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess we could have glued some uh, planks of wood grain on there. But since we were making this in the 90s, we didn't have like a high def version of what this stuff looked like, nor did we have a really fully integrated internet resource yet to see close up pictures or, you know, scans of the original. So we kind of, uh, we were just guessing what this thing would look like. And we just thought, yeah, that's close enough. Okay, it doesn't have the wood grain there, whatever. Um, and I'm going to get to the uh, the switches and the dials and all that stuff in a moment. Uh, but, you know, okay, that's not accurate. It's supposed to have like an extra um, indent. I think this was one panel, this was another panel. It doesn't have that. This was sort of made kind of on a budget. I mean, the wood, I can't remember, a couple hundred bucks. The chair I was just given. All the little greedly bits that I'm going to show you in a second, they were they were a little bit of money, but the whole thing was like sub 500 bucks. So you're not going to get a, a Star Trek captain's chair for any price tag, even remotely close to that. But I love it. Now, um, because of the way it's made, and because I've moved a few times with this thing, it's not actually bolted together. Like if I rotate here, I can actually take the whole thing apart. Like, there's the chair. Here's the office chair itself. It's got a bit of dust on there. Um, and the uh, the wood box at the bottom is actually just sitting 
on the uh, wheels for the office chair. So, I mean, if I wanted to, I could just lift the whole box right off. I probably shouldn't, but you can see, like, that just, that would just come off. I've always thought I should maybe bolt this thing together because if you sit in it the wrong way, it can, you can go ass over tea kettle. Actually it happened to my wife once, so we were doing a little Skype test. She sat here and unfortunately the whole thing kind of lifted forward. There's my knees. Let's talk about these uh, control panels themselves. Now, luckily I now have a very good resource for what this stuff should look like, but we've got eight rocker switches. They don't do anything, but they are there. We have, um, I think these were bits of, uh, let's move it so the light's not in the way. Um, I think these were lights from a car and I just sort of chipped out the pieces and these are old incandescent indicator lights. Um, totally not how they should appear. And in fact, I'm very lucky that I have Star Trek bridge crew in virtual reality. I can actually compare what this should look like to what it looks like in the game. And that would indicate what it used to look like on the original set. Now, let's see if I can just do a little insert there of what that looks like in the game. And that's what it looks like here on my version. Uh, the, the rocker switches should be the right buttons, sort of, um, they should have different colors. These things should actually be little triangular, almost pyramid shaped things, but they're not. Again, I did this without any uh, kind of close-ups of the shots. All I could do was just look at our standard definition copy of the original series and kind of guess what that stuff looked like. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, we've got uh, these little bubble things that are covering some lights. We've got some buttons. Talk about them in a second. We have the, um, the little disc thing, library card, etc. Um, these are actually, ironically, about the same size as an old floppy disk, three and a quarter inch floppy disk. Um, a friend of mine who worked on Star Trek, who actually knew, like he worked on Star Trek The Next Generation, he knew a lot about the original series. He says this thing actually had a very slightly, uh, um, what would you call it, shaved off corner, like it was tapered, which made sliding it into this a heck of a lot easier in the original series. He once told me he knew somebody who had a bunch of those from the original series. He was going to give me one. I was like, are you kidding me? An actual artifact from the original series? Never ended up happening, but that's okay. Uh, and then, of course, this is that um, intercom thing that you see in various places around the ship. Um, and I just made that out of another piece of the same kind of, this is a painted plastic uh, and I painted one of each of the different colors. I think I know where the other discs are. I'll get to those in a sec. Um, but the same material is this and I just painted it the, what I guessed would be the Enterprise Blue. Put a little mesh uh, speaker grill in there. Now, um, these lights. So you're probably thinking to yourself, first of all, these aren't even centered properly. What the heck's going on there? Um, what happened is I originally had this as, if I can get the focus in right. Um, I originally had these, these are, you know how if you go and um, you put a coin into one of those little vending machine gumdrop things where they, uh, they have the little toy inside the clear sort of egg? That's what these are. These are just little gumdrop toy things that I've opened up uh, and then I glued it to this panel. Now, when I had the very first version of these, they were taller. They weren't sort of semispherical, hemispherical. They were a little bit taller and more bulb-like, and they were they had a lesser circumference. So they actually, they were centered originally on this thing properly. I could never make them match these buttons. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Because like, once again, thanks to Star Trek Bridge Crew, I can show you, um, here's what they actually look like in the game so why is mine so completely inaccurate from the game or from the original uh, set piece? Well, my buttons are what I could find in a sort of an antique electronic store. They really push and um, they're on a branch of four. I'm going to show you the underneath of this in a second. So I had four in one, you know, block and I had to kind of tag a fifth one onto the end. You'll notice it's sticking up at a weird angle. That's my uh, very bad carpentry job inside there. I made this myself. Uh, my, my friend's dad made the actual wooden panel. The underneath here is hollow and empty with all the electronics. I did the electronics. I asked my boss how to make some of the stuff work and then I just built it all myself. What's one of the things that I made work? Well, if we hit this back button in, now I've actually got power running to the red and the yellow and the green.
So it's it's actually a properly functioning uh, set of LEDs inside there, which is pretty cool. Uh, the back ones don't really do anything. And again, these were, you'll probably see the greens a little closer in there. They were positioned a little better with those other gumdrop pieces, but not anymore. All right, and then uh, this is sort of uh, kills the power to all of them if I just turn that off. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to just lift off. If I can, maybe I can do it with one hand. Let me just see what we got here. Yeah. So I haven't really looked under here in a long time, but here is the underside. So what you got is a little bracket to hold that disc thing and a 9-volt battery. There's the... Um, can you make it up? Not really. Can they see how there's like a bank of four switches and then I tacked a fourth, a fifth one at the bottom? And then all that loose wiring. That's my work from the 90s. Good God, that's terrible looking. But it does work. Now, what else is inside here? I haven't looked in this thing in a long time. We have a bag. Ooh, what's in there? Aha! There's the yellow one. Okay, let's set that over here. There's the blue one. So now I can... Uh, have red, blue, and yellow library cards, whatever those things are. Oh, and then I've got some um, covers for the feet or for the wheels at the bottom. Anything else? Nope, that's it. And you can see inside there. Wow, the the wood looks brand new. Well, it looks like it was just recently built. Huh. Anyway, so that's inside that side. I'm wondering what I've got inside this side because this is also something I can just pull back and open as a little compartment. Uh, this was my friend's dad's idea, you know, like why why waste space when you might be able to put things in there. There's the back of the rocker switches, nothing else there, uh, holes for those little indicator lights there. What's inside here? Okay, oh, we have a mystery bag. What is inside the mystery bag? Okay, this is what you call irony. Inside here, are those little gumdrop prize things. That's the size that they were originally. I clearly held on to a bunch for the sake of if I ever need to replace them. And ironically, I didn't. So instead, I have these other ones that I picked up. So basically, I've got a whole bunch of, you know, it's, it's this little toy thing, and then you've got, I don't know, you can get a, a promise ring, whatever the heck that is. Um, oh, there's one with a little Dalmatian. That's cute. Yeah, so uh, I've got a whole bunch of replacement rings for the other arm side over there, but that's what was in the bag. And just in case you wanted to have a look inside, there you go. So there's some pretty decent craftsmanship, like Scott's dad. Again, shout out to Scott's dad. You, know, you put these little um, areas in here. I guess that probably makes sense from a carpentry point of view. It's got these nice straight lines here. Like this is this is really well built, this thing. As a thank you, I remember um, asking Scott, so how can I, what is your dad like? Uh, and apparently he liked to brew his own beer, so I got him a little uh, make your own beer as a, uh, as a thank you note for that. Here it is. This is my original series Star Trek Captain's Chair. I love it. It's from the 90s. It's great. Um, I know you can't see me, but uh, here, you can sort of, you know what I look like. I look like that. Yeah, this is truly something that I have loved over the years. I'm so happy. It's not it's not film accurate by any stretch, but it does what I need it to do. In fact, when I was talking about uh, my rocky history with Star Trek, I was actually sitting in the captain's chair the whole time. It's just due to the angle of the camera and that you couldn't really make out any of the details. That's why I've tilted the camera down now. I'm not important. Let's put me away. It's the chair. The chair is fantastic. I love this thing. Um, and ironically, um, with what's going on in the world right now, I'm working from home in the office, which is actually the room we are in right now. So I'm actually using this chair while I'm at work. I would have confessed every once in a while when I'm in the middle of uh, a call or doing some stuff online, I will occasionally hit the button and go, damn it, Scotty, I need more power. But <clears throat> that's, uh, nobody else needs to know that. Anyway, there we go. Thought you might enjoy checking out my Star Trek Captain's Chair. It's awesome. And until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.